Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna do an experiment with the subwoofer system. When I initially set up, you can go back to my video, I'll link it up here in the corner. At the very end of my REW, the Room EQ Wizard, I set up a high pass filter so that right below 20 hertz, the subwoofer system would roll off. That was a recommendation based off of a video that I watched by Home Theater Gurus. So kind of following suit, that's how I set up mine. When I did that REW video, I just had the two PB1000 Pro subwoofers behind the screen. Since then, if you follow the channel, you'll know that I added the four 18-inch stereo integrity subwoofers in an infinite baffle setup behind the screen. In the two PB1000s moved behind these seats here and I redid my whole room, went through the Room EQ wizard and got everything set up with the mini DSP 2x4 HD and left the high pass filter on all six of the subwoofers. So the experiment that I want to do, having a high pass filter is personal preference. So that got me thinking and I've been wanting to do this for a while. I'm going to leave everything the way it is with the high pass filter. We're going to throw on a couple of demos and we're going to get some volume going in here and get some things shaken. I'm gonna set up my U-Mic 1 right here in my main listening position and we're gonna do the feature in REW called the real-time analysis which will show us a graph in real time as the movie is playing and all the sound is happening and it'll show us what that graph looks like and what kind of decibels we're getting at a certain volume. And then after we do a couple different scenes of a couple of my go-to demos that I like to do especially when testing out the bass. We're going to go into the mini DSP and we're gonna remove that high pass filter completely and then come back and take the exact same measurement at the same volume level with the same movie demos and compare them and see if there is any type of noticeable difference with or without the high pass filter applied. That's the plan for this video. Let's get everything set up, take our initial measurements and see what happens. We got the U-Mic 1 hooked up and we're getting our computer ready to go here. We're connected to our mini DSP 2x4 HD and we're opening up the Room EQ Wizard software so that we can run our real-time analysis feature to get our graph and our decibel level of our various demos. Jumping over to the mini DSP, we're just checking the crossover section so you can see here the high pass filter is applied and if we bypass it, how the line just goes flat across the board. So I'm checking them all right now, making sure they are all applied and we'll take our initial test the way it is with the high pass filter on. Inside of the RumiQ wizard, we're gonna look at the bar across the top and you will see the RTA for real-time analysis function. When you click on that, it's gonna open up the graph that is gonna give us the real-time analysis of what's happening in the theater room. You will see in the upper right corner of the RTA graph here, the decibel will show the live decibel reading as the movie scenes are being played. And then on the left, there is a decibel chart that goes up and down and then across the bottom we have our various hertz so you can see which hertz are playing at what volume i'm going to be setting the denon avr master volume to negative 15 for these tests i figured that's a pretty loud volume it's a little bit louder than i would normally watch a movie at in my room but hopefully it will give us enough volume for the comparison differences with and without the high pass filter involved. Now that we're all set up, let's take some measurements. We are going to start with the race scene from Ready Player One.
Okay, here's the results of Ready Player One with the high pass filter applied. After the entire race scene, this is the peak SPL. So you can see how our, our curve comes up here. Our peak here is just about 20 hertz, and you can see right here we're at 108. Over here we're at 23, also at 108. Our very peak was 112 at 26 hertz. I know at one point I saw 117 on the decibel meter over here, so I'm not sure why it doesn't show that. So that is the Ready Player One with high pass filter. We're going to go back into the Mini DSP, and the only change we're going to make before rerunning this is we're going to bypass this high pass filter across all four channels inside of the Mini DSP and just make sure that all four channels are bypassed and that it is a flat line across the board. This is the end result without the high pass filter. Now let's do our comparison. We're looking at the results of Ready Player One race scene without the high pass filter applied. Our peak here, about 109.5 decibels at 19.5 hertz. And then you'll see the dip. And then our peak volume altogether about 113 at 26 and a half was our peak. But you'll notice the, the roll off below 20. Theoretically, everything above 20 should stay the same. Our roll off, really the part that should change is this part here is what the high pass filter should affect. Our peak below 20 was at 19 and a half at 109 decibels. This little peak here, about 99 decibels at 17 and a half. From the looks of things, there's not a whole lot of difference. We got maybe a little bit more decibel, even above 20 hertz, but the roll off below 20 really is very similar. So let's move on to the next demo and see if there's any difference in that one. These are the results from Edge of Tomorrow with the high pass filter. So let's remove the filter and run the same opening scene again. Edge of Tomorrow without the high pass filter. Final results after the opening scene. Let's put them side by side and see if there's any differences that are noticeable. Here's the two charts next to each other. At first glance, you'll see they look identical, but if you look right here, you'll see the most obvious difference between the two, and we're looking at about five decibels difference. So that is pretty significant, in my opinion, due to the large amount of bass in that opening scene. This is where we saw the most difference by removing that high pass filter. So on the bottom chart where it drops off, the top chart is five decibels higher when it comes to that sub frequency below 20 hertz. So again, I think this just comes down to personal preference and whether you like that low of bass playing on your system. You're just going to have to try it both ways and see which way you prefer, knowing you have the option to run it either way.
This demo was from the intro to the movie Den of Thieves, and you'll see that the curve is pretty similar. I didn't really expect there to be much difference. This is just a classic shootout, lots of gunfire scene. Not a whole lot of bass effects. I mean, there is, but nothing crazy like Edge of Tomorrow. But you will notice that below 20 hertz, right about here, there is several decibels of difference. When you get down to that 17 or 18 hertz range, it looks like we're somewhere between 87 decibels with the high pass filter and closer to 90 without the filter. So a little bit of improvement below that 20 hertz mark as well. We're gonna kick things up a notch. We're gonna do that Edge of Tomorrow intro again. This time the volume on the Denon is gonna be at negative 10 instead of negative 15 with no high pass filter applied in the Mini DSP. Here's our before chart at the negative 15 volume compared to the volume at negative 10 on the Denon. And as expected, we have about a five decibel difference in volume. You can see at 20 and 30 hertz, an uh, increase of about five decibels across the board. To finish this video off, we're really gonna shake the house. We're gonna go to reference volume, which is 0.0, .0 on the Denon and do the Edge of Tomorrow intro once again at zero, no high pass filter. Here's the results at reference, 0.0, .0 on the Denon Edge of Tomorrow intro. Not a whole lot of improvement, actually, only about two or three more decibels at the peaks. That wraps up this video for today's experiment. Thanks for watching. Please comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for me. And please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so you don't miss any of the future videos that are still planned for this channel. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.